Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the James Julia Auction House, taking a look at some of the guns that they're going to be selling in their upcoming Spring of 2018 firearms auction. And today we're taking a look at a shotgun that is unusual in a couple different ways. This is a gun made by Charles Lancaster of uh, London, and it is unusual in that it has sort of a double action trigger mechanism, and it's a four barrel break action shotgun. Uh, neither of those things is exactly common. So Charles Lancaster first got into the gun-making business in London in 1826, and he quickly developed a reputation for really excellent quality. In fact, for the entire life of the company, Lancaster guns would be known as really top quality guns. Uh, in fact, during the original Charles Lancaster's lifetime, he actually received an appointment directly from the Prince Consort, Prince Albert. So uh, he continued in that business, not surprisingly, until he died in 1847. At that time, the business was taken over by his two sons, Alfred and Charles, Charles Jr. Uh, they continued to run the business until 1859. At that point, uh, Alfred lost interest and, and took work in other fields, and Charles Jr. took on an apprentice by the name of Thorne. And uh, Thorne, that was in, let's see, 1870. In 1878, Charles Jr. died, and Thorne took over the business, but it retained the name Lancaster, um, and would remain in business under that name until I believe the 1930s. Now, the original Charles Lancaster had been kind of one of the instrumental figures in developing breech-loading shotguns. He, uh, he was making breech-loading pinfire shotguns and making some developments to that system to try and improve their gas sealing, developed his own non-reloadable rimfire cartridge at one point. It didn't take off, but it was work that he was engaged in. And in addition to shotguns, he also did custom rifles, double barrel rifles. Uh, multi barrel guns have been kind of a, a staple of the Lancaster Company for, or were, for its entire existence. Now, this kind of came up to a new level with Thorne when he took over the business. He introduced a series of two and four barrel pistols, which we've talked about here before. Uh, those were actually reasonably popular guns among fairly well to do clients, uh, big game hunters going to Africa or Asia. Uh, well-off British officers. This, the four-barrel pistols in particular offered an interesting alternative to a revolver. They didn't have the gas leakage issues that a revolver cylinder does, and hey, they carried four uh, large bore cartridges if you wanted it. These were made up to 50 caliber. So that was, they made something like seven or 800 of those pistols, which is really quite a lot for a high-end gun like that. They expanded into that market by also making a small number of four-barrel shotguns using the same mechanism. And in fact, they even did a couple of four-barrel rifles, which is really quite remarkable. Uh, this one is just, just a shotgun. It's a 28-gauge shotgun, so relatively small bore, which is important when you've got four of the barrels out there. If this were something like a 12-gauge, it would be a remarkably heavy and poorly balanced gun. But as a 28-gauge, it actually handles pretty nicely. The entirety of the company and the gun model is actually printed on the top rib here. So we have Charles Lancaster, 151 New Bond Street, London, patent, four barrel hammerless, sorry, four barrel breech loading, and hammerless gun. And just to make sure you don't lose track of that, it's also printed on the gun's frame. Charles Lancaster, patent, London. And in case you weren't looking at this side of the gun, they also printed it over here. Charles Lancaster, patent, London. On the rear tang, there is a simple safety lever. When you see safe, it's on safe. When it's in the center line, it's ready to fire. And then lastly, we have a series of proof marks up on the barrel here. This is nitro-proofed, and you can see the 20 there for 20 gauge. But really, I think the most interesting part of this is the trigger mechanism. This is the same system that was used on the four barrel pistols, and the way it works is that there are four firing pins, but there is only one striker that actually hits the firing pins, and the striker operates on this rotary mechanism. So it first fires the upper left barrel, and then it works its way around clockwise until it's fired all four. And the way this thing works is that when you pull the bottom trigger, that's actually the cocking mechanism. It rotates the striker into place, and then a light press on the trigger, fires that barrel. You then release this, recock it, and fire. 
Now, there are two ways to do this. You actually do it this way. Um, you can either use this kind of like a set trigger to cock the gun and then wait and then have a nice light trigger pull, or you can use it like you might a double action gun, where you only use this front trigger, pull it all the way through, and it fires each barrel in succession. Uh, just like the pistols did, this is kind of a cool, cool mechanism to give you those two different options. Now we can open up the barrel using the Jones underlever system here, rotate that lever out, and then the gun breaks open. Much easier to show you this with it disassembled, though. Uh, interesting to note, if you look here at each one of the firing pins, there's a series of dots. One, two, three, and four. Those indicate the firing order of the gun, and the little inserts here are also similarly marked, so that if you disassemble them you know exactly which ones go back in which breech faces, which is important because this is certainly a hand-fitted gun. And if you ever wanted to know what the breech end of a four-barrel shotgun looks like, well, there it is. You've got one large sort of cross-shaped extractor there uh, that will cam open when you open the gun up to pull out all four cartridges. Uh, other than that, this is basically just like a large side-by-side. And, of course, as would be expected for a gun of its quality, it has some just basic decorative embellishment to the metal, and a very fine wood grain. You can see the stock there was just really nice patterning to it. And obviously someone has enjoyed shooting this gun, because the recoil pad, which is a more recent addition, uh, is a little bit squished down from being used. Well, if two barrels just doesn't cut it for you, and the Kiapa three-barrel gun isn't of your interest, well, maybe you would like a classic Lancaster four-barrel. If you would, take a look at the link in the description text below. That will take you to the Julia catalog page on this particular gun, where you can see all of their pictures, including things like bore and stock exact measurements, uh, as well as their description, their value estimate, and everything else you would need to place a bid on it online. Thanks for watching.